Let's pick up where we left off in the previous video by adjusting the scale of our texture. Okay, let's say we're happy with that. We can right click over our object and go to Smart Material Editor. Our overall displacement scale will determine just how much these rocks will extrude. If I bring it way down, it's gonna be a very slight amount. You may not want to go too far with it. In general, you just want to scrub this slider here. Also, your depth value. You could leave that at 100 and adjust it up here because this is 100% of this value. So, for example, if you got 20% here and 100% here, that's not going to override this. That's actually going to be 100% of 20%. So, just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and save. Now, I'm ready to start painting this. You'll notice my opacity is quite low. The reason for that is because I'm using this second draw mode that is based on brush pressure, so I really would have to mash down on it quite hard to get 100% opacity. So let me choose the absolute draw mode. This is going to apply constant pressure. So no matter how light or how hard you press, it's going to remain constant. Whatever your opacity level is, let me make that 100. Obviously, the paint texture is obscuring the depth, so I can adjust the opacity on this layer. Let's say I want to start all over. Obviously, I can undo a few times, but if you want, you can also just hit the delete key, and whatever channels are enabled, 3D Coat will clear from this layer. With that done now, I'm going to switch to the fill brush. If needed, you can adjust the settings of cube map projection. It's recently been added to 3D Coat and offers much more control. It's basically 3D Coat's version of triplanar mapping. X, you can flip that. Your Y projection, you can flip that. Same thing with Z, or just rotate it the way you want. And also, you can see that it's blurring between those projections. You can adjust that. You can make it sharper or let it blur. And you can also adjust the expansion at the border between those planes. Let me set that back to zero. And zero. I think the default values will work fairly well for this. All I need to do is just check my settings, make sure I'm on the right layer. Opacity, make that 100. And now, uh, once I check my settings, just do kind of a pre flight checklist. I'm going to go ahead and just click on the model, and it's going to fill the entire object. With the fill tool, whatever is visible, if you click layer, it will fill this smart material across multiple objects. Let me go ahead and close that out. Switch to the paint tool. Set that to zero. We'll look at our depth. So there you go. This is actually a pretty big deal because you cannot currently do it in any other application. If I need more resolution, I can apply additional live clay or dynamic tessellation in the areas with the tools that I mentioned beforehand, and it will not break this sculpt information. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. On the back side, I may not need all of this information. So what I'm going to do is go to the Sculpt Workspace, and as I mentioned, you can use some of the tools like uh, Reduce. I'll turn wireframe on, zoom in, it's already on. Okay, so 
let's hold down the control shift key combination which this is assigned to and as I brush let me make sure I didn't do that all the way through you want to make sure to check ignore back faces I've done that and I'll do it again some more just for good measure and I can modulate the depth here in the layers panel. It's just a copy of what I have in the paint workspace. I can test to see whether or not that broke this sculpt layer by simply adjusting the depth slider. So let's go 50. Okay. 25. And I can even go above 100. Let's go 125. We can use tools like magnify layers where we can increase or decrease in a localized fashion the depth beneath our brush. There's also erase layers if we know for certain we want to erase that depth information. I can also use maybe some rock type of uh, brushes if I have them. And we'll use the magnification brush here in the paint workspace as well. You can adjust the degree of change here. Let me turn our opacity back up. And that's going to wrap up this overview of the sculpt layer features that brings together high poly sculpting and PBR texture painting in the same stroke. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.